I V M. TFG Football is an IVM production, and you can also check out their other awesome shows like Made in India, hosted by May Thomas, where she brings exclusive acoustic sessions and interviews with the best independent musicians in India. You're listening to TFG Football. Well, well, well. My wish was granted. I wanted Miku to be on the score sheet, and he was. And well, we also said that it would be a great finish to the weekend, and Bengaluru FC did put up a show. But on the other side, there was also other cracker of a game that happened in ATK's home ground, where they were demolished by a stronger FC Pune City side. Both the matches end up in the same scoreline: four one, FC Pune City one, and Bengaluru FC one four one. Well, the weekend matches uh, that happened before. Saturday was Mumbai City that played two nil. They won at home. They are maintaining, uh, you know, the winning record at home and conceding less. Uh, well, Friday's match a dead game. Once again, Kerala Blasters involved in a goalless draw against another team that was involved in a goalless draw in the opening match. Jamshedpur FC. Now, welcome to the TFC New Football Podcast with me, your host Siju, and I have both the boys joining us via phone call, Kevin and Charanjit. Well, I have to start with the Sunday's matches here because they were the ones insane, crazy games. Uh, talking about ATK versus Pune City, man, Pune City finally have found the winning formula where uh, Marcelino and Alfaro join together and you know do those goals. But amazing stuff from Pune, right? We start with you, Charanjit. Yeah, very good stuff, uh, and. Uh I, I must say I was uh, a bit uh, disappointed by it in every single fashion. I yeah. mean, uh, the, the problem that we've been pointing out that you're not using uh, using the lingo to its full potential. Uh, same thing was seen last time. Hitesh Sharma did the best he could. Uh, the pinching, uh, I think that goal is going to go go down as one of the best yeah. pinching goals uh, of the season. Uh, but. Apart from that, the gameplay was lacking. Uh, there was not enough initiative uh, to really uh, take the game uh, to Pune City. The match started quite fast, hmm. but uh, I think we just faded away yeah. uh, when the second goal happened for uh, Pune City. There was no fight back when it, it seemed like they just it became embarrassing afterwards. Hmm. Uh, the, even the crowd was a bit disappointing. Uh, the news came out later that uh, on on the eve of the match, uh, you know, ATK people went door to door with free tickets and uh, free jerseys hmm. uh, in, in the sector five, Bidhan Nagar Salt Lake area. They wanted people to come, and they even uh, arranged for a bus to ferry them to the stadium. Uh, still, apparently, the the original announcement uh, of attendance in the stadium was uh, some something around eighteen thousand something. Which suddenly became uh, thirty-two thousand officially by the end, end of the night. So, give it some time; it might go beyond one lakh uh, official estimate uh, in a week or so. So, yeah, overall, very poor show by ATK, and uh, it just seems like uh, you know things are slowly falling into place. But Pune City should not take this result as as a hmm. vindication that everything is awesome yeah. uh, in the camp. Because th- this was a more or less a surrender in the last last thirty odd minutes. It was a surrender from ATK. Hmm. Yeah, then it feels so. Right. Yeah, they have to be careful. Yeah, Kevin, uh, the ATK defense was like very poor, right? I mean, if you go to look at the whole squad, we thought that ATK had a better squad, but there you go, the Alfaro and Marcelino uh, match up magic that showed. No, nothing, nothing close to that. Uh, the game was uh, obviously four-one. Uh, the scoreline suggests that uh, FC Pune City was a better side, but nothing close to that. Because ATK, right from the start, they did everything what a good team should do. They held on to the ball. They used the wings. The crosses were coming in. Obviously, there was no finishing touch from either Zekina or even Koki there. Hmm. So that was the, the issue with, uh, you know, not getting the goals at the, at the beginning of the game. And Pune City was just come for counter-attacking football. That is all they had in their mind. They, because early on, the pressure from ATK was so good that they were pinned down to their own defensive 
up uh, I'm talking about FC Pune city hmm. uh, all they did was just uh, had two strikers waiting for for the ball to come to them and and it wasn't uh, see this is this is fine and when you sit back and absorb the pressure and you have somebody who's waiting at the half line to get in those uh, you know darting runs and this is these, these kind of goals it is masrido and alfaro uh, you know all they had to do is just wait for that one mistake Yeah. and it was not one it was two mistakes from from uh, the tiki defense that gave the ball away to once it was given to uh, um, alfaro one was once it was given to marcini hmm. and all the day was this burst into speed and get in the goal and and it's it's see once you get the ball at half line and the job is really half done right. you always have to get to the opposite uh, opposition d and then finish off yeah. these guys are absolutely great at finishing marcelino and alfaro they know where the goal is they know where the partner is coming in from excellent layoff excellent assist by both so overall atk's game was really lacked because of their finishing the way bipin approached the ball you know the, nobody could expect that he won the way the one who taking the the kick and, and i think that is the surprise factor and uh, the finish is top class yeah. obviously there was uh, you know the, there was uh, there was a rise on the ball there was a step on the ball and there was space behind it hmm. so all in all a great finish by uh, etk but did deserve more than uh, one goal over there hmm. uh, obviously uh, the, the the finishing has to you know work better for etk's favor hmm. pune city you know they came to do a job away from home and it was always difficult to form a side that that uses their wing yeah. uh, and and the defense of uh, you know, pune city was kind of okay they were able to you know keep the ball with them when 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 they won it in their own defensive half but uh, the the game belonged to both of these players Al- alfaro and uh, marcelino yeah right and it was also great like i mean it was some it was something like mistakes done by atk is what pure city mirrored gave to good advantage of that and you know uh, played well there It's also good to see Indian players scoring in almost every game now. I mean, the other match that happened in Bengaluru also saw so Lenny Rodriguez being part of the score line, uh, score sheet over there. Now, talking about Bengaluru FC, a complete demolition there, right? A dominant side. There were a lot of hullabaloo before uh, banter happening on uh, Twitter ahead of this game. But every banter is good, right? And it's fun. But at the end of it, uh, the team that was better on the uh, better on the field. took the match away 4-1 victory for bengaluru sitting top on the points table just like expected uh, kevin your thoughts on the match so no, the this this game uh, the hype that it created was uh, you know delhi coming in with one win and uh, bengaluru coming in with one win each hmm. it, it made you feel that it's going to be a tight game it's going to be a you know, a game where uh, uh, the one who wins first is going to be the one who makes the most mistake yeah. but towards the end it didn't look anything like that it was this one sided affair uh, being all too good all too powerful for delhi dynamos uh, the defense was absolutely uh, you know this left in a hazard hazard situation for themselves to you know, to be blamed but uh, being you were all so good uh, because uh, they they used everything you know uh, they used the wing they used the midfield they used even their their wing backs coming up mm-hmm. from uh, both sides Uh, it's difficult to stop a side like that, and then when coming coming to the finishing, we talked about if, if your game is over and you lack the finishing, you end up in a nil nil game as well. So that's that was the problem for uh, Delhi Dynamos. Uh, they didn't have anyone to even come close to the Bengal defense. Because Bengaluru was just you know they 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 are on a they they on to make a statement now here in ISL. I think they've already made them. They've stamped their authority in, in the ISL already in two games. Mm, yeah, Chiranjit, your thoughts on the match? Man, <laughs> it looked easy. That's that's the scary part. The win looked easy. It was so dominant, so prevalent. Still, it looked easy, and uh, they were not even like the strikers were not hundred percent. Like first two goals were scored by a defensive midfielder. Hmm. You know, uh, it, it was like it was like yeah, okay, we'll we'll keep the ball, we'll maintain the flow, we'll do what we want, and when we, uh, you know, get the chance, we'll just uh, make one in. That was it. It it just seemed like uh, you know, just it it seemed like reminded me of that time they were playing uh, you know uh, AFC Cup qualifiers. You know, they they would face some team from Sri Lanka or uh, or Maldives or something like that, and they would just. Uh, scored three goals and come back home. Aram say, it, uh, and uh, and uh, that that's what sort of uh, tells you the difference between a well-oiled side 
uh, and the side that just comes together before the uh, season starts and has a uh, you know quick uh, pre-season and then they just get into it. One of the things that I have said quite often, but obviously uh, you know, nobody would believe something like that until they see the proof. The ISL teams look so good because they only play each other. Hmm. Okay, all of them come in half naked. All of them come in uh, without their uh, you know strategies and their uh, uh, team uh, formation and everything sorted. And and, and they just uh, you know concede goals because all of them have a uh, you know lack of coordination uh, in the defense. And uh, we just don't tell the difference between the teams at first because all of them are in that same state. All of them are half naked. So. Bengaluru FC are different in the sense that they have that advantage. They play the, uh, they were playing in the AFC Cup before, but still, this is not the kind, this is not the team that was playing in the AFC Cup. Yeah? Mm. So many of the new signings, uh, uh, they play so many foreigners who were not their part of the team, uh, and uh, it's 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 still a quite a new uh, team. Uh, you know, apart from that, uh, apart from that uh, squad that was playing in AFC Cup, but what they did differently was that they. It really went their uh, preseason in a, in a very uh, structured and planned out manner, and and that's how a preseason should be done. You play uh, particularly strategy based games against uh, some quality opponents, like they did against East Bengal, uh, uh, and uh, even tried out against uh, Gokulam, I think, and Chennai uh, uh, City. So you try out, you play like three thirty minute uh, periods, and you try different formations and strategies so that you are prepared. Okay, hmm. so that's what they did. They were boosted by the first win against uh, Mumbai City, which wasn't that hard for either. But but this time, they they just they just came out. It just seems like they're running so smoothly. Everything is going so great, and others who are coming up against them will just. We we'll just get blown away yeah. at this point. Yeah. I, I just don't see anybody matching up to them. There will be there will be teams which match up to uh, uh, Bengaluru FC. Maybe by the time January comes in, when the other teams have also gotten themselves sorted out and they are playing well, and Bengaluru FC have AFC Cup matches, and the players are starting to get a bit tired, maybe a few injuries. So Bengaluru FC will be playing a lot of reserves in ISL. Hmm. And uh, they will be resting their main players because probably they will be pretty much there in the top four by that time, so it won't matter anymore. That's when you will see some uh, teams come and beat uh, Bengaluru FC, especially in, uh, when Bengaluru FC are not at home. Hmm. So yeah, right now it's, it's scary. Yeah, it's I mean, be, yeah, 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 they look the clear favorites up there. Now, quickly moving on to the two matches that happened over Friday and Saturday. Now, Saturday's game, Mumbai City were playing at home, two nil win, two one win against uh, FC Goa. Uh, again, we had a Katimani moment. I mean, I think that's how that's the only way that uh, <laughs> teams or FC Goa can concede a goal. But uh, was it was it like there was no. It wasn't a dominant performance from Mumbai. Instead, it, it I felt like FC Goa had a better game on the field, uh, and, and until that first goal was you know conceded and with that error, uh, Kevin, your thoughts on the match as a whole? You're right. You're right, Siju, because uh, this was a game where Mumbai City had to show the dominance in some way because the first home game was there, mm. and uh, they did uh, start off well. Uh, uh, so FC Goa was very was very calm in their defense. Yeah. Uh, they knew that uh, Mumbai City has taken the game to them right from the kickoff, and they held back. You know, uh, the, the way they start off the game from the back is excellent because that just shows the confidence that the defenders have to make out the game starting from the back. So Mumbai City were pressing high uh, in the first half. I think most of the possession, the uh, first 15 minutes that Mumbai City had was in the attacking half or was in their attacking half. Hmm. So that really shows that the intent was there to get the game uh, and, and take the game to FC War. But uh, there, were, there were goals that uh, could have come easily. Uh, I felt the FC War were very unlucky. Uh, they had one goal disallowed because uh, it was ruled offside after hmm. they had scored. And, and they even hit the post. <laughs> so that, that, that was something, uh, you know, it could have gone either ways. But uh, Katimani is there uh, to just uh, entertain everybody and uh, he does it once more. Yeah. That back pass to him. And I think there should be a, a, a training session where they 
I have Kati Mani just to walk on his back passes because he did it last time against, uh, I think, one of the teams. And it was the same type of uh, ball that he received. He goes back two steps trying to clear the ball and that's when he gives the goal to, to the strikers. Uh, it, t- till that moment, uh, 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 the midfield of Mumbai City were, was, you know, the dependent more on uh, Emania there. He was trying to get in the balls. Yeah. So he's a good, strong, uh, sturdy uh, midfielder, but uh, he lacks pace. Hmm. So at times, we see the good runs uh, uh, coming down from, from the, both the flanks, but Emania refused to let go of the ball and try to go by himself. Hmm. So that, that's kind of, uh, you know, where we missed Portland. Now, Forlan was somebody who's uh, Emania plus the pace. Hmm. So, that, that's the problem I feel with Mumbai City. But FC Goa could have done much, much better had they you know, had some luck going on their part. They hit the post as well. Yeah. Some great saves by Amrinder, a double save yeah, yeah. Uh, from, from him. Uh, they kept them in the game. And I think I think that was the difference between uh, you know a, a one-all or a two-zero. Because... Hmm. Uh, the luck factor was just missing for FC Goa. Yeah. So, Ranjit, I just had to ask you one question. But uh, though Mumbai City didn't look dominant, but a lot of changes was felt because of the inclusion of uh, Balwan Singh. And it, it really looked like that guy is back in action. And, you know, Mumbai City needed him desperately. Yeah, he's uh, back. Uh, he's uh, doing well for the national team. Uh, he's he's effective in a team like Mumbai City uh, where uh, he can be uh, supplied by somebody like uh, let's say uh, Ruidas uh, from the wing or Sanjeev Pradhan uh, or uh, even uh, Imana. The thing with uh, Mumbai City was that, I mean, you take a win. You know, you get a win, you take a win at, at home. Hmm. And you can argue that uh, in this way or that way, Mumbai City deserve to win. But uh, you don't go out to the press and say, like, we showed a new face of hmm. Mumbai City yeah. uh, tonight or something like that. Gulmara is he's, he's humble all the time. Uh, I don't, I don't know what was the uh, necessity of that. It seems so out of character for him uh, to you know play up a sloppy victory like that. Uh, they, they just got playing lucky. I'm I'm more uh, more worried about uh, FC Goa because they have just landed themselves in trouble uh, twice in a row because of cutting money. And uh, if you're hearing uh, rumors, if you go by those. Uh, uh, apparently, Katimani will not play the next match, which at this point, you have to take a call like that uh, if you are the head coach. So, now they have two other uh, options. There's uh, Bruno Colazzo, uh, another uh, go-on goalkeeper from Rouen, and uh, you have uh, Naveen Kumar, uh, who's, uh, uh, who's, I think he was with Chetil Brothers last season, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so the thing with uh, uh, you know Bruno Colasso, I think he, he would be considered uh, uh, you know uh, in running, but the guy has not been a uh, first choice keeper since the 2012-13 season when he was uh, playing for Sporting Club de Goa. Hmm. Didn't have a great time. He he got picked by Bengal FC but played only two matches in 2013-14 season. Was benched by Dempo all season next season, uh, and now he's back. Uh, I don't think he's got enough competitive experience in recent times to be uh, you know, thrown out there. Hmm. So you have to now look at Naveen Kumar, who was uh, with Chakil Brothers last season, has never played an ISL game in his life. He's, uh, he conceded seven goals in the last three matches uh, when uh, he played for Chakil Brothers. But, uh, granted, he was playing against Aizawal, uh, Bengaluru FC. So, yeah, uh, he's... he's uh, Seen the biggest and the baddest, and uh, you know, conceded three goals against mm. each of them. So mm. it's a it's a bit of a fix for uh, uh, FC Goa. They need to find a goalkeeping replacement. Maybe that's what they will have to think about in January. Mm. You know, try yep. to get in a foreign goalkeeper or something like that, uh, and and get some uh, other other player who's not taking out. So this is a moment of reckoning. If either they double down and go on with Kati Mani, and risk a lot, or cutting money just turns around and you know, stops being cutting money, uh, or they are gonna take. They have to take a risk with a, a different keeper. Hmm. Now, now the coach is always known to defend their players, right, or stand by their players, and that's exactly what he did at the post match. He said that uh, he doesn't, you know, look at the errors at the moment. He just wants him to play well and do well. So let's see how that goes by. But I have one question, just one question on the match that happened on Friday before we get into a short break. Uh, 
Kerala Blasters and Jamshedpur FC will they get goals and what can Kerala Blasters do more like they have a squad that can go blasting there but they at the moment miss that factor and though the fans say that you know and last time when we started uh, there are there are season where they started off in a slow note but then went on and played but now the games as they come will get tougher and if they can't play at home and they can't score at home it'll be much difficult for them when they are away at uh, other games Kevin yeah uh, firstly looking at uh, the defense of uh, Kerala Blasters i think single handedly Paul Paul Rachubba, Rachubba yeah. uh, is the one who's keeping them in the game. Yeah. He brought out some excellent saves, and that uh, you know, that just shows the defense of uh, Kerala Blasters is not uh, not at the best uh, tandem with, with the goalkeeper there. Because so many times we see the defense beaten, and then he was the one who kept them in the game, getting those great saves. Hmm. But uh, how will the goals come? I think it's a question that. Uh, the Rene will have to look into because Bobatov is not firing and I, I I was not surprised by his performance. I, I had never expected him to come and score goals because you require those supply balls coming into him. TJ Vinic on the wings is not doing enough. Now, who's getting in those balls from the, from the back line to the midfield and uh, it, it's not happening. It's not working for them. The only reason I think Kerala Blasters didn't concede uh, in that game In, in this last game is because of the goal goalkeeper there. Yeah. Now he's the only goalkeeper in the, in in the ISL who is a, is a foreigner, and we see the heavy dependence on him. And it's going to be tougher for Kerala Blasters to just keep those clean sheets coming if, if, if his performance is going to be that bad from the defence. Yeah, Chiranjit. Yeah, well, uh, it's a, it's a bit of a, a pickle that they are in. And of course, you you know, uh, even if uh, Bobatov was getting twice as much uh, support, he would not be as effective. Uh, you know, maybe he's just getting used to the conditions at a new club uh, and uh, trying to you know, fire well. I think these are the signs of a poor pre-season. Uh, so, as uh, so, which which is actually a good news for KDFC fans. It actually means that uh, as the players keep playing matches, they will get better. The same thing that happened last season. Of uh, course, they were. boosted by the arrival of new players but uh, you know you know something similar is going to happen they're, they're going to uh, start scoring that's there's no question about it but uh, uh, you know whoever is out there uh, in the franchise uh, as part of the management needs to take notes and uh, see what they did wrong in the last two three seasons yeah. and not repeat them again yeah Absolutely. Now let's time to slip into a short break, and on the other side, we'll be talking about I League, uh, the first game that happened. That was really a classic opener for that I League needed, and we'll also preview tonight's match. All, our, all, all of that on the other side. Hi, I'm May, and I'm a huge fan of the indie music scene in our country, a scene that's relatively underground, even though it sometimes speaks its head overground. But there's no shortage of talent, and I get the privilege of interviewing some of the most awesome musicians on my show. I've had the likes of Euphoria, Crush Kale, Hardcore, Randolph Coria. I've had singer-songwriters, folk singers, electronic music producers, playback singers, rappers, fusion artists, instrumentalists, classical musicians, and so on. Whether mainstream or not, these people have chosen to release their original music, and these are the people currently Currently shaping the direction in which our music scene is heading. Join me on my show every Monday and tune in to discover the unique talent coming out of India today. You can catch Made in India on your favorite podcasting app or our very own IBM podcast app. Welcome back, guys, and uh, well, what a match to open uh, to kickstart the 11th edition of I League. A crazy game that happened in Ludhiana between Minerva FC and uh, Mohan Bagan. In the dying minutes, Minerva equalize and you know share the point uh, with Mohan Bagan. Well, of course, who else would start the scoring line uh, on the score line for uh, Mohan Bagan other than Sunil Nurde? Sanjeev, I think actually you need to admit now. I mean. You need eleven Sunino days. That guy is just insane. I mean, he's the guy who took up, who had the ball from the start, who went up till there, uh, managed to sneak in all those uh, guys in blue who were stop trying to stop him, and then finally he gets the goal. He's just a different and, and player. It was, it was gangster the way he scored the goal. <laughs> like he, he changed position, went to the right of midfield, uh, and uh, got the ball there in his own half. Ran up, up the length of the pitch, uh, you know, just uh, put 
behind the three defenders with uh, sheer pace, kept running in, kept running in. He's in the box. He sees the goalkeeper coming up, and he finishes with his uh, right foot on the run from a very tight angle. Yeah, you know, and and the ball went into uh, went near post. It was it was like a very uh, difficult to pick that line, and he did it with extreme accuracy, and uh, the <clears throat> the goal happened. I'm I'm half amazed that that was probably the goal of the season, obviously. So uh, Star Sports instead of talking about it immediately cut to a highlight of another game, uh, but. I'm I'm amazed by the goal that he scored, and I am uh, scared at the same time because Sony Nori just seems like he belongs to a different planet in that team. So there's there's no coordination in the uh, forward line. Uh, Chroma has not been firing as he should have, uh, and uh, I think something is wrong there with the way he just refused to pass the ball to Sony Nori, even though uh, Sony was in the, in the clear so many times, like. Uh, Kroma would get the ball, he would run up, and he would look at the goal. But right then, uh, you know, uh, Sunil Nodi has uh, sneaked up from the left, and if he just passes the ball, Sunil Nodi gets a clear shot. But he just somehow did not take the shot. He just uh, went for glory and kept missing every single time. Uh, it was part of the problem for Mohan Bagan. Uh, they created less chances from midfield, and uh, they when they did create chances, the uh, the, the strikers did not. Uh, do the right thing and went for glory. So that is something that has to be fixed immediately because they don't have any more time. This is not the kind of performance uh, that you can uh, expect to win a derby with. And the derby is like just uh, today is Monday. Derby is on Sunday, and East Bengal are looking good leading up to the tournament, uh, leading up to the league season, and uh, they will of course play uh, uh, you know Isol FC tomorrow, but. You just need to, uh, you know, fix fix this. If you are gonna have to, if you're gonna be competitive at the derby, yeah, a full strength East Bengal side will mess with this defense. Hmm. Yeah, Kevin, thoughts on Minerva's game? Amazing game that they had yeah, to I show. Just, I was just recollecting the way uh, Minerva played their last uh, last season, the first game of their last season. Hmm. How bad they were! You know, they were just not able to keep the ball in defense. All they did was play long balls. And just look at the way that they played their first game of this season. Yep. Contrasting change in just in the second season of their top league. They made some excellent signings and uh, they've already started playing. Now, th- this was a game of two players. Now, Sony Nordi obviously is the star man for Mohan Bagan over the years. For Minerva, it was Chencho. He was heavily guarded by uh, Mohan Bagan players and, and they knew he was a, he was a big man. And uh, they, they kept him at bay. They just, uh, Allowing this, allowing him space. So that was uh, one thing that uh, Mohan Bagan had tactically, tactically good at. Uh, but uh, Minerva in the second half, what a game! Uh, nobody expected them to you know, uh, come back so strongly after conceding that goal uh, from Sunday. They even hit the post uh, in the second half. Yeah. Now, that, that's oh, something that uh, could have yeah. been the course of the game at that moment. Uh, but uh, set pieces is what we see. Uh, that Minerva also has worked on. Now that was that's something that's a positive sign for them. And uh, the way uh, the the team, I, I think, fought back. Uh, it was not easy to come back uh, strongly against Mohan Bagan. Although it's the first team, the first game of of of, of both teams. Hmm. But uh, uh, Chencho and uh, I especially want to see the performances of Deepak uh, Devrani. Uh, he was playing right back uh, in in the in, in the game. And he's uh, continuing from last season. He was providing some great support down that flank of his, and uh, that's kind of that's the kind of defense you want to have. Uh, not just sitting back. You want to, uh, the wing backs to come up and support your midfielder and with the overlapping run. I think that that's the difference between a, a good defensive team and a team that can come up and attack some wings. Yeah, absolutely. So, for me, Minerva Punjab look like a decent side. Uh, much better than what we've seen them last season. Mm. The signings obviously have, have made the difference for them. Yeah. Uh, Lago was uh, good for, for me. His performance also was notable. Mm. Uh, Sony Norte, uh, it, it, it is again again a dependence on him. Uh, so, w- what do you do if he gets injured? Uh, is there a replacement? I, I doubt. Now, Dupanda Dika will not fire as soon as uh, he's expected because uh, last season against uh, Shilang Lejong, 
he wasn't the one who was creating the channel he was the one who was finishing the channel hmm. so as a that that's the kind of supply that he would also be expecting uh, chroma on the wings uh, sometimes trying to uh, get in uh, in in way of uh, each others uh, ball play so that's this is the first game so you can't really draw too many conclusions from the way the side is going to turn up for the season but for for a first game of the season i think it was a cracker yeah absolutely i mean good we saw good football that's what we wanted and that's exactly what happened yes, and yes, there, was the <laughs> there was definitely there was definitely a growth is, in minerva chencho chencho is going to be uh, you know <clears throat> one of the guys that uh, teams will fight over Hmm. next season yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely i'm i'm sure all the scouting eyes will be you know on him to see who to take and he's definitely going to be a promising player for minerva now moving on to the rights match the final bit of our uh, show today now shillong play their first game against the new i league team gokulam kerala fc now kevin will really friendly start with you because we know what which team is involved here uh your expectations from this game uh so it's a whole new team uh, everything was uh, stripped of them obviously they let go players rather than having uh, them poached because that's the, that's how they work uh, chilong ajong can play create players even after an entire team has been taken away from them uh, so this this team will be different from last season from one point of view is that the foreigners will play a big role rather than uh, the indians uh, like last time uh, now they will be missing kanda bika they will be missing hita kino vaksi Now, there will be players who will be uh, stepping up in their place, uh, but I, I think it's the dependence on foreigners that makes them you know, kind of uh, a different national uh, version say, that we've seen over the years. Since it's always uh, the dif- is the best that they finish, I think they will be aiming for the top three. I, I don't want to sound like uh, Santos Kashyap from last season, but uh, I, I believe you know this team is strong enough uh, as we in the forward line to get them uh, past the first uh, the the top at least. But, but they, they will they won't finish the fifth this year then it, it's going to be a better season for them hmm charanjit so yeah well gokula mercy obviously they are playing their very fast uh, first i league game uh, the way they were when they were uh, you know last we saw them that was in the uh, tournament uh, sikkim gold cup that was not very inspiring at all but they have uh, changed a lot uh, they have uh, you know gotten in a few good foreigners uh, they have Uh, added uh, some experience uh, in their squad. Uh, Sushant Matthew is there. Uh, good to see him back. Uh, Usman Ashik. I don't even remember when I saw him last time. But obviously, you're not looking at a, a side side that's uh, immediately going to challenge for the title. You just know that from right off the bat, they they're going to just try to make themselves home. Uh, you know, get used to the traveling routine. This is going to be more of a learning experience for the management than anything else. The first season, as, as usually is, uh, so they are going up against Shillong Lajong on the very first game, which is a bit of a tough call for uh, uh, you know a new team because most teams, even the best I League teams, uh, are apprehensive about uh, going to Shillong. It's high altitude. The weather changes uh, every uh, hour or so. now it's raining now it's sunny out there your body just goes into a different state you don't uh, produce the same kind of uh, performance a fuel burning uh, uh, process that uh, you can uh, in a, in an environment that you're used to and uh, they don't really have too many northeastern players uh, in their side who can yeah. actually you know uh, who, who can actually act as a guide to other teams who know the Shillong's conditions uh, that well. Mm. It's also pretty high altitude, so that affects uh, how you perform. Yeah. So it's a, it's a lot of uh, young Kerala players, which is great to see. But first game, like their first top division game they're playing in history, is away at Shillong, mm. which is going to be tough for them. Yeah. And Shillong as long as as Kevin has already uh, you know looked into their squad, it's it's uh, it doesn't look. that you know reducted hmm. from uh, what it had last season it can still put up a very dense defense it can hold its own uh, and i think that's that's what they're going to try to do this season they're going to uh, try to uh, make things work hold it there uh, maybe go for a top 3 finish third or fourth 
is uh, what they they will be thinking about at this moment unless something awesome happens and one of these new new players just uh, you know three or four of these new players just turn things around for them uh, so that that's what's going to happen both have lots of new faces to look forward to new players are being introduced into the system uh, in a, a, in this game so there's a lot of historical significance uh, uh, in this match so it it's, it should be a cracker but i don't see uh, the gokulam fc uh getting much of a chance to win this hmm, okay yeah so long like i'm going to be rootless a uh, tough okay. start a tough start for kerala and uh, gokulam kerala fc and but we have to do our things uh, score line predictions uh, kevin shillong versus gokulam kerala fc so it's been the first game uh, for both teams uh, we, we can't really uh, be hopeful of too many goals but uh, again uh, a one man will be a big victory for shillong hmm. and if the, if, even if it's a nil-nil draw i think it's a great great result for both sides yeah charanjit i think i think they will have to go for a one nil win i don't expect shillong lions to score too many goals but given that shillong lions just played the shillong premier league and uh, most of their players are not really like starting their season fresh with this they have a considerable advantage also the fact that they're playing at home against novich side where most of the players have never played in i league before hmm. so it, it's like imagine imagine aizol fc uh, or chennai city last season and so they you got them at your home on the first day you make use of it you have to win yeah yeah well let's see a, a good game lined up for tonight let's see how both these sides do a relatively new uh, one is a relatively new team the other is almost having a new side and with with the coach and the assistant coach so all breaking down down to the 8 pm kick off tonight let's see how all of it goes we'll bring you more about it in the coming days and definitely review tomorrow as well now that's all from today hope you enjoyed the show a, cra- a crazy massive review and preview show this was uh, let us know what you th- thought about all these games and what are your expectations from tonight's match uh, in your comment in the comment section below on our youtube channel also like share subscribe and hit the bell icon to so get updates of our new episode you can also talk to us directly on twitter charanjit oja bozan usko kevin sej matthew 94 for the tfg football twitter handle to get all the updates about indian football and if you want to read up on all these games go back and what hap- to see what happened uh, get on to our website the fangrass.com have a great day guys enjoy cheers come back to us tomorrow That was Tantrik Steve from Hansraj College, Delhi, performing at IIT Bombay's Mood Indigo. Just like them, there's a lot of new talent and art coming out of colleges all across India. But unfortunately, most of this goes completely unnoticed or ignored. To fix this, we started ATKT.in. Hi, I'm Ankur. I'm a musician and a rapper. And I found that one of the best things about being an artist myself is finding new talent. Through ATKT.in, Tanya, my colleague who's a dancer, and our whole team really is putting all of our efforts into discovering and promoting all the coolest talent that's coming out of colleges all across India. And this goes up on our website, our social media, TV, radio, and now of course this podcast with IVM. Make sure you go to our website, support the talent with your likes, your shares, your comments. All of that really matters. Go ahead, check it out. ATKT.in. Good evening ladies and gentlemen this is your captain speaking sorry to say but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun as you can see there's death destruction and chaos taking place all around us but don't you worry food and drinks will be served shortly and i would recommend checking out IVM podcasts to get some of your favorite indian podcasts we'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over thank you